question is, is did you live your day to the fullest? And do you have your, your day planned out for tomorrow, for the next day? Every night I go to bed, I go, Whew, I did it. I did it. I accomplished, you know, and I have, I, I set macro goals. You know, the problem with people and the reason why they don't become successful is they have unrealistic expectations, unrealistic goals, and an unrealistic, uh, unrealistic time frame. I'm going to become a doctor in a year. Is that going to happen? I don't think anyone says that particular but thing but i'm yes. giving you i'm yeah or i'm going to become rich you know i've heard people are like well you can win the lottery that's not a process that's called luck mm. that's called just fate it happened and what what do most people do when they win the lottery they blow all their money versus the man or woman that's out there grinding putting in the all time right. and the effort and the hours <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. Gabrielle Lyon Show, and I'm so thrilled to bring you this episode. Why? I sit down with Ray Cash Care, former Navy SEAL and CIA agent. In this mind-blowing episode, we discuss how pain is a privilege and how you can leverage pain to become successful in life. We also talk about how vulnerability is a strength. In fact, vulnerability is a superpower. Finally, we discuss how your body is your resume and what that means. There are so many good statements in this episode. I encourage you to listen to it, not once, but twice, and listen deeply to the nuggets that Ray Cash Care drops. Ray Cash Care is now an entrepreneur and a speaker, and we will include where you can find him, Without further ado, let's dive into this episode. And as always, this episode is free of charge. The fee is pay it forward. Thank you to Element for sponsoring this episode of the show. Element, spelled L-M-N-T, but pronounced Element, is an incredible electrolyte drink mix that comes in cute little packets that you can bring with you everywhere. It has no sugar, no junk, no coloring, nothing artificial. I love Element because it is essential to have good hydration. It's essential for proper brain function, for proper muscle function. Element makes it incredibly easy to obtain and meet your electrolyte needs. You can head on over to drinklmnt.com slash Dr. Lion. And what's so great about Element is it offers a no questions asked refund. You can pick something and you will get an eight single serving packet free with any Element order. This product is incredible and you have nothing to lose. If you don't like it, they will give you your money back. No questions asked. Go to drinklmnt.com slash Dr. Lion. Ray Cash Care, thank you so much for coming on uh, the Dr. Gabrielle Lyon Show. You are an amazing, amazing human, former Navy SEAL, mm -hmm. uh, some other letters which I think that you should talk about, and just truly an embodiment of wellness and fitness and fortitude. And you didn't even pay me to say any of those things. We don't even have to go on. I'll just, <laughs> we could end it right there. This has been a great episode. Thank you so much. Tell us, uh, tell the listener a little bit about, and by the way, you and I have known each other for years. Yes. And, but the listener might not know you, and I'm so excited to share you with my audience. Yeah. So let's see, uh, known as Ray Cash Care, uh, going on 52 years young. Uh, fitness is a lifestyle, thanks to you. Um, former Navy SEAL, spent some time in the Navy doing some things that I'm proud of to serve and defend my country, um, shifted focus from there, went over to the CIA. I can say that now because I'm no longer with them. Spent 14 years um, defending, defending the nation against you know the war on terrorism, doing some things I was proud of, some things I wasn't proud of. Uh, and then um, switched over and took my, you know, took my chances at the entrepreneurial world, which is what I'm still doing right now. And I'm you know, married, got two great kids. I got a hot ass wife, uh, who's a patient of yours. Yep. And as, as I am, and, uh, we are just living life to the fullest. You know, I'm running a couple, I'm doing speaking, I'm doing corporate training, I'm doing couples training. 
um, part owner of a gun company, um, living the American dream. And uh, yeah, um, I love it. And the one thing I like to tell everybody is I'm one of the few people on planet Earth that love getting older. So that's who I am. Boom. Boom. As, as you say, Boom. love getting older. I want to I wanna circle back to that. Tell me a little bit about, um, you know, it doesn't have to be long, but, a, mm. you know, a little bit about your upbringing and why you decided to go into the SEAL teams, what that was like, and then into the CIA so people can get to know you. Because here's what I know about you. You're an incredibly capable human in some of the most dire situations. Well, I, I think it all stems from, you know, it's it's funny. I was just talking to a mutual friend of ours, Mr. Tim Grover, and I told him, you know, and I, I love his platform. What he says is, you're not a motivational speaker. You want to be an elevational speaker. I'm actually a pain coach. So to circle back, um, my childhood was full of pain and suffering and abuse. And I could sit here and play the victim about it. But instead, um, there was a moment in time, it was roughly 17 years old, where I, I don't believe in flipping the switch on and off. I believe in flipping it on when the time's ready and just leaving it on. So I flipped it on when I was 17 and I haven't turned it off since. And all I do is I take the pain, the suffering, the anguish um, that I went through and I just compare it to, you know, things that I do nowadays. Like if you're in war, um, you're standing over someone, they're, they're bleeding out. I remember where I came from. I'm like, if I could get through that, I can get you through this. Um, all I do is I use pain as my platform to success. That's, that's my secret. That's what I've done. And a lot of other people, um, they run from it. They avoid it. I embrace it. You know, my father was murdered at a young age. Um, he abused me. He was a very physical man. Um, I don't do that to my children. We've had conversations cause we both have kids, um, and what I've learned is, is that if you just take the pain and I, I put it into this, I have this like mental, cause I'm big on the mindset, you know, that I put it in this mental tool bag I have. And when the shit hits the fan, I go, well, I remember when this happened to me. And I remember when this happened to me. And all I do is, is like, I use it as a comparison. I'm like, the shit that I'm dealing with right now, isn't that bad now overseas with war. I use that pain to numb what was going on currently, you know, so if you're laying down, suppress a fire, you've got someone that you see underneath you is bleeding out. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. And I get emotional about it um, because you have to eliminate the threat before you can assess the situation. I'm literally taking care of the situation, remembering the pain I went through, trying to take the pain from the current situation. And I kind of just place it somewhere else and it's helped me get through things. So, you know, um, Pain is a privilege. We've heard that again. I'm using someone else's quote, but uh, pressure is pref pressure is privilege. I work better under stress, under tension. I don't want things to be easy. Um, I, you know, in case in point, let's use the gym. When I go to the gym, I don't want to talk to people in the gym. People think I'm the biggest dick in the gym. I put my I put my headphones in. I either listen to podcasts, and p my podcasts that I listen to are whenever I go to like if I were to listen to one of your lectures. Everybody takes notes. I see them, they take notes. But when they're taking notes, they're not focusing on you. I take my phone and I literally will say, ma'am, I'm going to set this up here. And I record every damn thing you say. And I sit there and I listen and I watch and I'm watching the passion and, and your, you know, your body language. And then what I do is I hit stop and then I listen to it over and over and over. And then what I do is I take notes from it. And these are the things that I'm doing that, that are helping me succeed in the entrepreneurial world. I watch everybody like you might be giving a, a lecture on medicine and they're trying to write down all your damn big fancy words that you talk about, which I can't spell half of them. <laughs> Me, neither can I. We're but good. the yeah. focus is off you. Yeah. So all I do is just try to keep the focus when, when I'm in a, I call that a normal situation. I try to focus so much more on you because when things go bad and things always do go bad, at least in my life. Um, can I, can I stop you for a second? Yeah, please. What you're saying is people always think about the fear response as fight or flight, mm -hmm. but that's actually only one fear response. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Yes. That's only one stress response. There's actually something called tendon befriend and the courage response. Hmm. Tendon befriend is when you go to solve a problem or help somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's actually a response that triggers, for lack of a better term, bravery. Hmm. 
it's a it just is a biological process. Yeah. And so when you are going to help somebody else or taking the onus off yourself and thinking about the other person, it allows you to be more capable. Yeah. My question to you is when at 17 the the switch flipped, mm-hmm. was there an aha moment? Did you have a defining moment? Yeah, I did. And it's it and it was nothing like it wasn't like you know, like God came down and said anything to me. I remember it like it was yesterday. And you're talking to a guy that can't remember, you know, I've blown up a couple of times. I forget a lot of things, but I was 17. Um, I came home from, I was at a bar because that's what we did, you know, underage drinking back then. Um, and I remember um, sneaking into the house because we used to do that too. Sorry, mom. Um, and I remember washing my face. I remember like at night I would wash my face and I remember it was winter time. And as I, you know, washing my face and I came up and I grabbed my towel and I started drying my towel, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't see me. I saw the reflection of my father. Now, my father, for the most part, was a good man, but he was a womanizer. He was abuser. He did a lot of things. He loved me, but he was a very violent, violent man. And it was like I was seeing this out-of-body transformation that if I didn't change what I was doing, I was going to become this, this person. He was an animal. Um, and right then and there, that's when I was like, okay, you know, I was, I was, I was roofing, I was doing roofing, I was doing drugs, I was drinking, getting in fights. And it was like right then and there where I was like, okay, you know, and how I, how I like to kind of the symbolism of it is for the first 17 years, it was a horror story. Um, and I was letting other people write the narrative. And then right then and there, I was like, screw this. I'm going to start writing the narrative. Right. I want this to be a happily ever after. I want to create and control because I'm a control freak. I'm going to control, you know, my destiny. So I joined the military. Um, and I'll tell you this right now. I am when it comes to taking tests, I'm not saying this, I am not the sharpest tool when it when it comes to taking tests. I'm more of a hands-on guy. And you have to take this test, and I bombed it. I bombed it. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. Everybody's like, you'll never, you'll never become a SEAL. You need to have, you know, combined scores of mathematics and this and that. And I was like, screw it. I'm still going to, this is what I'm, this is what I was destined to do. Tenacious. Tenacious. Uh, Yeah. Just, I have no quit. You said that, no, you don't. And you said that this is what you were destined to do. Do you believe that? I do. Do you believe that your upbringing, again, you haven't talked about details, was so intense and tumultuous so that you could get through SEAL training, go to war, go into the CIA. That pain is what sharpened my double-edged savage servant sword that gave me the tools I need. Buds, you know, basic underwater demolition. Yes, I've never heard the end of Winter Hell Week, ever. <laughs> I started with my class and I finished with my class, which is which is very rare. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, all that pain that I was going through, in my mind, it was like number one, you know, I programmed, I'm all about programming, right? You, you program, you give me programs for what I need to do. And it's easy. You just, you follow, follow it to a T from people who have been there and done that and it will work. And all I did was, is I just programmed myself that number one, this is not a voluntary course. You can't quit. And then whenever shit hit the fan and it got bad, I was like, this is why I would just go back to the abuse and all the things that happen and, you know, getting locked up and, I was like, this is what made me who I am. And I dealt with it better than other people. And uh, I succeeded with it. Do you think that if you let that go, you would still have the same strength and capacity to prioritize pain and move through pain? So for example, what I mean is, do you feel like you hold on to that so that you can push forward? Yes. Yes. I, it's, it controlled controlled chaos. I keep it. I keep it bottled up inside. Most people, what they do is... You know, they, they have it in there and they, I control when it comes out, when things get hard, when I get backed up against the wall, that's when I use it. But it's taken a lot of time to learn how to control that because as a young man, I was very angry when my father was murdered, even though, you know, um, of the abuse, I still missed him, but I was angry. I never could understand why the thing, all this shit kept happening to me. Um, and then when I turned 17, you know, at least in my mind, and my mind is a little fucked up and warped. Um, I was like, you know, God or someone or something has been putting you through test to get you ready for this moment. Because like it hit me 
it's just one of these moments, like when you know, like when I met my wife, I knew. Like there's only a few times in my life when I've known something. You know, when I met my wife, the first, I knew she was gonna be my wife. I knew it. And people were like, that's, that's luck. Call it whatever you want, right? I, I knew I was destined to be a Navy SEAL. I knew I was gonna marry this woman. And now I'm destined for, you know, making an impact um, on the, with everything I do, whoever I, whoever I reach, whoever I touch, whoever I, um, you know, shaking hands, you know, um, is, you know, I'm just shaking as many hands, meeting as many people as I can, making as big an impact as I can. And I tell my story, you know, I, I tell my story to everybody because I used to be ashamed of it. Um, and when I, did that, when did that change? Probably in my, I would say it, you know, cause I'm a little older in my forties. It's just like, I used to almost be ashamed of what happened to me. And I've realized that there's a lot of other men and women who have gone through a lot of the similar, similar things that I have who tell their story, um, some very well-known speakers and entrepreneurs. So me being me, I would just go up and ask them like, Hey, um, I have, I have a similar background. Do you have a second that we can talk? And it was almost like their answers where we're just programmed because they, it was the same answer from everybody. They're like, you've got this amazing story to tell, tell it, don't be ashamed of it. And I was like, you know, but I feel like if I do that, people will think he's and everybody single, who gives a fuck what they think. You tell your story. It's like taking off that ruck, you know, like when I go on stage now and I speak, I have this ruck that I walk in with and I take the ruck off and I start pulling things out, alcohol, pornography, um, self-doubt, right? I'll pull all these things out. This is the weight I used to carry. And then what I do is I start putting things in there, eating better, you know, and I'm carrying the same weight, but I'm, I'm carrying what I want to carry versus- That's interesting. Yeah. And a lot of people like, it's a little confusing at first, but then people, because I don't say what I'm doing. I just take it out. They're wondering people. why you're unpacking on stage. Exactly. And everybody, my thing is everybody has- a ruck that they're carrying that's full of shit, of negativity, of pain, of suffering. Um, and all I've done with that pain is, you know, in an Alice Packer ruck is there's compartments. The pain is in one compartment, but all the bullshit, all the negativity, all the people that I don't need in my life anymore, I've got them out of my ruck. And now I'm putting new things into my ruck, new relationships, new um, opportunities, you know, and I love it. How do you... How do you, or what would you tell someone who has had maybe a similar experience or let's just say pain mm -hmm. to eliminate some of the negativity? Number one, depending on the severity of the pain, it's not your fault. Like if you were abused in multiple ways, if you were physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, or sexually abused, gee, it's not your fault. Number two, you're not alone. And number three is um, your job what I tell people what helps is telling that story. Like I, I, I have friends who have been molested. I've known women who have been you know, sexually assaulted and they don't want to tell their story. They're embarrassed. But every single one of them, once they tell their story, and it doesn't matter who you tell it to, you know, you can get, you can create a little life group. You don't have to get on giant stages like you. I mean, it's when you just express it and you can, you impact other people it, it, it helps. I, 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 I can't even put a feeling or emotion on it, but it's so rewarding when, you know, I mean, I just spoke at a, an event for 250 people and then I spoke at another event. I spoke with thousands, but I was in an event recently with David Webb, who's like a political analyst, General Bulldog, who ran Afghanistan. Um, and we had all these amazing people in here and I went up on stage and I had a planned you know, like me, I had everything written out. It was, it was perfect. And as I got up there, I just looked around. I said, you know, I was going to talk about politics, but Mr. Webb's here. I was going to talk about this, but and all these people are here. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something I've never done before. And I said, I'm just going to speak from the heart. And every single person in that room leaned forward. Um, and I, I did something that most men don't want to hear. I used the V word, which was I became vulnerable because the one thing I've learned and I'm transitioning is vulnerability, especially for and a man or a woman, is a true characteristic of strength. Now, I'm not saying, listen, you know my wife, I'm not saying we sit around, we watch, she's watching, you know, she's crying at movies. No, 
but I'm saying I'm vulnerable with myself and my feelings, you know, because for the longest time, um, I didn't tell Trish of my background because I was embarrassed and she had a similar background. So I was going through life for about four years as a fucking hypocrite because my wife opened up and was telling me the things that happened to her. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so sorry for you when the same damn things happened to me. But I was, I let my ego get in the way and I didn't want to tell her. I was like, oh my God, she's going to think I'm less of a man. And the day that I opened up to her, you know, I mean. She probably cried. She cried and I'm not going to lie. I did too. Um, but it was a release. It was a release of emotion, of of uncertainty. Of I mean, there's so many words that, that was released for, but, and then it just, I think it just helped build our trust on so many different levels. And we're, you know, we're both the same age. She'll kill me for saying that, but. And we're, we're better and stronger than we've ever been. I mean, physically, mentally, emotionally, I'm stronger than I've ever been. And that's a dangerous thing when, you know, that's why I say I love getting older. I'm getting, you know, I am, a, I like, there should be a bottle of wine here. As I get older, I get better. Um, I am in better, I am physically, mentally, emotionally um, in a better place than I was. I've been, than I was yesterday. Every day it gets better. But do, would you say that you have inherent positivity? Yes. Would you say that, and I've noticed this trait, I know, um, I don't know if it's a team guy trait mm -hmm. or whatever it yeah. is, but there is this way where whatever it is that you want to think, you will be able to do it. You will be able to, for example, Shane, he just has to talk himself into it. And just mm -hmm. like that, yeah. it's like the greatest thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm the, you know, too many people, what, what you need to understand is, is it's, it's the self-talk, right? The most people, the self-talk is self-sabotage. Um, so what most people do is they talk their self, you know, off the ledge. Or sometimes they talk themselves to the ledge, right? Like off the ledge is people are like, I can't do that. I can't do that. It's too high. It's too high, right? No. As soon as I get to the ledge, I jump. It's like, what's going to happen? You know, I like perfect example. I tell people like a business deal or asking someone out. It doesn't matter. Like, right? I mean... When I asked my wife out, like, I knew it was only going to be one or two things. It's either going to be yes, yes or no. Yes or no. But too many people let the self-doubt, the self-sabotage get in the way. I can talk myself in anything. Um, and I think everybody has this capability. People, I actually think, and I know you're going to laugh at me, people are scared to become successful. They are absolutely scared. Both physically. I see physically, that as a mentally, physician. People, yeah. I mean- I see people that when they, I've seen people when they start getting in shape, they stop getting in shape. The transformation scares them. Yes. Why? It's a worthiness. Em embrace it. When Or I've seen people when they start making money, perfect example, right? Like I had a goal. I'm going to make a million dollars, like a million dollars in a year. And I did it. And then everybody goes, what are you going to do now? Because most people, they're like, well, I hit that, I hit that number. It's like, well, I guess, well, I found out being a millionaire is not a million dollars. It's two or three million. <laughs> so um, I, Dan Fleshman told me that. Yeah, so yeah, I literally yeah. went, well, shit, now I've got to find a way to make double or triple it. Versus other people, what they do is their mindset is once they hit their goal, once you get married, once you do anything, they think that's when the work stops. No, that's when the work starts. How do you practice this? What are, Do you have rituals? Do you have procedures? What do you, I have what do you do? You know, I have procedures for everything. I get up, I'm like a machine. Um, the first thing I do is I get up happy. That I make myself get up happy. Like people are like, how do you do that? Well, um, I lay my clothes out the night before according to the mood that I'm in at that time, right? Thank you to Paleo Valley for sponsoring this episode of the show. I'm talking to you about Paleo Valley beef sticks, but they also have Paleo Valley turkey sticks. These products are absolutely incredible and a family favorite. I personally love the beef sticks. They are 100% grass-fed and grass-finished. We cannot get enough of them. I have to hide them in each area of the house if I want to have any of them. They come from small domestic farms in the U.S., which is very important. They are fermented, which creates naturally occurring probiotics, which are great for gut health. Gut health is the foundation of all health because, again, as it relates to nutrient absorption, this is where it starts. Paleo Valley beef sticks, they taste amazing. And if you go to paleovalley.com and use the code Dr. Lion, you will get 15% off. That's paleovalley.com, 
Use the code Dr. Lion and you will get 15% off. Let's say the power goes off or whatever and you wake up late, you're just throwing shit together. You're not prepared. I prepare for the storm for the battle the day before because I know it's, I like told you, it's all about being controlled. I get up, I drink my water, right? Um, Your foo-foo coffee. I do. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. We're going to do that. All right. Um, I drink my foo-foo coffee, you know? Um, I have I have my journal and stuff. I do some journaling. Um, do a cold shower. That's what I'm doing right now. Well, hopefully that's going to change. Yeah. Hey, uh, plunge. Plunge. Keep calling whatever, you, plunge. man. <laughs> um, but I, I, everything I do is very systematic. And I I think the key to becoming successful is, number one, Saying that you're a control freak is not doesn't mean you're a narcissist. It's a good thing. Like I control what I eat, what I wear, who I surround myself with. Um, I control and I control as much time as I can. Like you know, I, everything I do is prioritize, strategize, monetize. I live by those three things. How, prioritize what's important for. So for me right now, health is number one with me. You know that health. Um, so you're going to be on time with your blood work. I'm doing it next week. I fair, I've already fair. told I've already told Peter. Wait to call me out. I told Peter. Fair enough. I'm going to do it next week. Um, thank you for calling me out. Uh, but it has to be done. Um, and then after that, you know, I'm, I'm going to strategize my day. You know, every day I make sure I spend time with my family. I'm getting it in. The one thing I don't understand, and I know I'm talking to you know a very well known doctor here, is the mindset of people that I deal with because I do coaching and stuff who don't understand the importance of fitness or nutrition. So, you know, like I recently posted something where, you know, a, a mutual friend of ours says he won't hire anybody if they don't have a six pack. And I got, and I was like, I love that. But your body is your life resume, right? Your body is your resume. Like, and I'm going to let you in a little secret. When Shane first met you, when I first met Trish, we weren't attracted to your intellectuality. No, we he totally was. Yeah, I'm kidding. Okay, yeah. <laughs> when I first saw my wife, I was very, because her resume told me this is a disciplined woman who takes care of herself. I would agree. Like, like look at the, look, I look at the way she dresses. So from there, that's where the work starts. Like now I want to get to know her deeper, more, you know, more on the intellectual side. I do this with everything I do. It's like fitness. I tell people this all the time. Like if you were out of shape, you wouldn't be my doctor. And people go, that's, you can't say that. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I, I don't, like, if I were to hire a fitness coach, I want, I'm going to hire somebody the way I want to look. And people go, well, you know, you can't say that. Yes, I can. Um, I don't want to be around people that aren't physically fit. Now, when I say this, there are, if you're sick, if they're this, but when I say the six pack, it's a six pack mentality. I know people that are literally, they look like they're 20 pounds overweight, but they're in the gym every damn day. They're doing the right things. They're eating the right foods. They're taking the right supplements. I have no problem with that. The problem I have is the people that sit back and they're body shaming people that are in shape or, you know, they're digging on the people that, that put in the time and the effort and they're like quicksand. They just want to bring you down because they haven't done it. So my thing is, is statistically, again, I'm talking to a very smart woman here. Last time I checked, Granted, if something like, you know, cancer or something would come up, but the healthier you are, checking your levels, right? It, it tells you when the storm's coming. Yes. So, right? I mean- The storm comes. The storm comes, the but- The storm comes. You got to prep for that. But what happens, what I've noticed with probably 80% of America is they don't do the blood work. They don't put in the time. They don't put in the work. And then they're behind, the st right? Because you can't, you, you can't catch it. You got to stay ahead of the storm. I, I agree. And has fitness always been part of your life? Tell always. Me, tell me a little bit. Because by the way, if you guys are listening to this and not seeing Ray Cash Care, which obviously we will post all about, you are, in, by the way, we, Matthew is here with me, my videographer, you are the epitome of what I think of when I think of Forever Strong. Thank you. You are- It means a lot coming from yes, you. Yes. I, I hold you in very high regard. You are consistent. You have trained just- and I'm asking you for the listener, but your whole life. Yes. And you are strong and capable and your body has withstood war. Mm. You had to be capable to make fast decisions. I'm talking about real life. I'm not yeah. just talking about, <coughs> um, you know, doing a whatever deadlift, which you're very strong at, but also being able to 
be physically capable? If, you know, the physical fitness came in when I was 13. Um, I've always, I'm a, yeah, I'm not a tall guy coming from you. I'm a giant, but um, I had <laughs> to throw least, that in there. Least, you're at least a, a foot taller than me. So, um, but when I was 13, um, I just, I just realized that everybody was bigger than me, but I was always like, I always had this aggressive personality. I was always like very intense. You don't, you don't say. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to find a way to channel it because I was getting a lot of trouble. And there was a guy when I was in, I think eighth or ninth grade, he was three, four years older than me in school named Rob. He'd be like, dude, you were built like to be a wrestler and to work out. By the way, was your, what were your quals in the teams? Were you a breacher? I was not a breacher. Good. So mainly I was a jump master and a SDV dive soup. So okay. I did that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt, but you are definitely built like I would say a breacher would be built. Wouldn't you agree? I guess. I mean, I'm built like me. I'm awesome. Dude, you are awesome, but you're still built like a breacher. By the way, do you get stressed out? Of course I do. You do? Yeah. Like when we define stress, we think about what, you didn't get your coffee creamer, you didn't get, I mean, I, I mean, I just can't, I can't let that go. But <clears throat> a guy like you, mm -hmm. who's seen some of the worst things in the world, mm -hmm. this is true, taking out the trash of yeah. whatever, do you really get stressed? It's, it's trivial bullshit stress, like my wife says, like, you know, Trish is my anchor, you know, obviously, you know, for the listeners, Trish is my wife, she's the one that keeps me grounded. Every person that is successful that especially that's a team guy um they have a wife who keeps them in check 100 yes. percent of the time 100 so, of the time um i stress when i'm not producing to what i feel is my maximum capacity i only have one speed i i, I don't believe in throttling up i believe in just giving it everything you have every damn second of the day and i am like you know, we have mutual friends who I've worked for before, but you know, people always ask me, what's your biggest, what's your biggest um, trait that you have in a good way? And what's your biggest downfall? And it's the same thing. It's me. Thank you to First Form for sponsoring this episode of the show. And with aging comes busyness. I know that sounds crazy, but I think, I swear, the older you get, the busier you get and the harder it is to stick to your meal plan, which is why I wanted to highlight the level one nutrition bar. This is an amazing tasting bar. They have all different types of flavors, chocolate chip cookie dough, chocolate crunch, chocolate mint cookie, you name it. These bars are big. They are 63 grams in size, which is again, a big bar. It's made of whey proteins and it has 20 grams of protein, 19 grams of carbohydrates, 260 calories. This makes keeping your nutrition on point, you can head on over to firstform.com. Use the code Dr. Lion. You will get free shipping on orders over $75. That's first one S T P H O R M.com and use the code Dr. Lion. You know, um, that is so powerful. It is, you know, I, and I know I'm not going to bring them up again, but, um, our mutual friend, I, I got to say this, this is probably one of the most impactful things that has ever happened to me in probably the last 10 years. I was in an event with Tim Grover. I'm sorry. I'm not name dropping. I love him. But he said, he met me and goes, you are just literally in, intense, insane. I love it. You're a younger version of me. And he goes, let me ask you a question. I said, you know, and when, when Mr. Grover, asked, it's yes, sir. He goes, tell me the one thing that you're running from and the one thing that you're, one thing that you're chasing. He goes, I don't want you to answer me right now. I want you to think about it. I want you to come back. I want you to write down on a piece of paper and give it to me. He is. And I wrote it down and I gave it to him and he didn't look at it. He goes, it's yourself, isn't it? I got, I'm getting emotional. I was like, yeah. He's like, you're me. Coming from him. I mean, I'm getting emotional. It's, it's, it was impactful. He was like, just keep, keep running from that old person and keep running to the person that you know you can be. And I mean, but that's why I get so stressed and I get so pissed off because yeah, I'm never going to catch him. I'm never, never I'm never, never. I'm never going to catch him. Oh my God. I'm just uh, thinking of all the stuff. Um, fuck Mr. Grover. Um, but that he knew, like he knew he didn't, he just grabbed it and put it in his hand. He goes, it's you, isn't it? And I was like, and I mean, I got goosebumps and I was like, no one. He's like, I've been there. 
He goes, every single human being I've met like you and you're a rare breed is, is it's the same answer. It's, it's in your DNA. And I was like, and I was like, well, what do I do? He says, just keep, just keep going for it. And I'm, I'm not letting back. I'm not apologizing for what I'm becoming. You know, I've had a lot of people, I mean, I've, I've started, um, you know, I, I don't know this success is a funny word for me. You know, people like to define success for, you know, the cars and the money. I think success, my definition is um, helping others help themselves. And the only way that you can really do that, Doc, is when you got your shit dialed in. I'm really starting to get my shit dialed in. Um, so I'm expanding with helping others. So in the last, you know, year, I've gained some, some success from a monetary standpoint too, which is great. Well deserved. Well, damn right it is, you know. And I mean, not and I in a, a lot of what I do is the back end. I have to give my wife props because she's the one that makes all this happen and controls everything. But I'm changing. People are like, you're, you know, they say you're changing. I'm, I'm not changing. I'm evolving, um, and I'm outgrowing some people. Um, I'm taking out the trash, man. And if, if, and I, that's, that's the a good thing to best do. piece of advice I can give you. If someone in your life, if something, if some place, right, emotional discipline 2.0, something puts you right. We live in three colors as humans, right? The blue where we disassociate, the green is where we want to be. And the red is which red lines us things that, Wait, what does that mean? Tell me what that means. So case in point, um, you and I are a married couple and I just, I'm screaming at you all the time. I'm going to disassociate where you just, you block it out. Where you block it out. Pain from the past blocks it out. Things that really piss me off. Like if, you know, let me tell you what puts me in the red. This is a drill that you can do that someone, that I, I teach. You probably get a thousand phone calls a day. Do you agree? The people that you pick up for are the people that you want in your life. The people that. The people that you don't, you don't need them in your life. So why are they calling you? N normally because they want something from you. I've called you before to say, hey, I just want to check in on you. You're like, hey, I'm, I'm, I've got 20, I'm, I'm like, nope, I don't want anything. I just but want- But do I pick up? You do pick up. And that's the thing. So that's <clears> advice, <throat> but that's what I do. Keep the people in your life. If you have to simplify it, that if they were to call you, you're going to pick up. The people that don't, you don't need them. You don't need them. And that's, that's how I make things that, and people are like, it can't be that easy. Yes, it can. My wife calls, I pick up. My daughter calls, I pick up. Few other people call, I probably got about 10 people that I will pick up with no matter where I am. I'll be like, you know, baby, this, pick up, you know? Um, but the rest of them, that's how I just, you know, I, I trim the fat. Too many people in life that aren't where they want to be physically, mentally, emotionally, or because they're carrying that the that ruck of just negativity um and it and it bleeds into your your physical appearance your emotional state your your mental capacity and as i started lighting up that load and putting in what i wanted you know the money comes in i'm in better shape than i've been i'm training with people and i mean I, this is you're talking to the guy that calls out michael chandler and tim kenny and go i'm gonna train with you guys and they kill me they call me the cockweed <laughs> half cockroach Half garden weed. Oh my God, I, that I won't, is hilarious. I won't, die. I won't die. Like Tim will poke me with a stick and I lay there and I go like this. But because they forget my age and I'm like, it's not my age. You know, I, I told you before, I'm late to the game, but I'm a fast, I'm a fast mm -hmm. learner. Um, if you're not constantly pushing yourself to the limits, I, I, I want to be in the red, but it's, I want to hit it and then switch gears. Like, oh my God, like a, a great workout. You know, I, all these things that I'm doing, I'm, I'm controlling the red. I am like, I am creating the red. So you're probably not the type of person that is good with a day off. No, I uh, hate, no. Yes. Not okay. Got it. Got Active it. Active recovery is the correct term. I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, fitness. Active recovery with everything I do. Okay. I'm everything. I, I know. Vacation I use, is probably not a good place for you. No. And when I go on vacation, like Trish and I will get up and work out in the morning. I'm up at four getting work done. Then me and her will go to the gym at six or 6.30. We have our coffee. We'll do whatever. We have our alone time at night and then I'll be back on it. I can't stop. When you transitioned from the CIA, how was that? Was the, you transitioned um, from the CIA to then, did you do contract or then? Um, so how I, it, how did, I was okay. contracting through the CIA. And then when I left that, I went over with Pedro's. Okay. Um, the transition from... 
uh, CIA to the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. world. Was that challenging? Yes. Why? Because you don't, in, in battle, you know who your enemies are. And in the entrepreneurial world, they'll sit there, they'll smile at you, and they say they got your back, and they'll cheer you on, but they're cheering you because the, what they're really doing is they're waiting. They're waiting for you to fall. They're waiting to, for you to fumble, and they want to see what you're going to do. Have you had to take in a new mental framework from the CIA, transitioning to the entrepreneurial word, world? Were there new lessons and new things that you had to implement? I have to be more strategic in the, in the entrepreneurial world than I did in battle. I know that sounds crazy, and I, I know a lot of guys are going to be like, I can't believe you said that, but um, entrepreneurial world has so many levels. So many layers, um, and and but it's like the battlefield of the mind, isn't it? It is the battlefield of the mind, and it's exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting, you know. Um, because case in point, you go overseas, you're outgunned, overmanned. Um, you know, you get in a firefight. We come home. In business, you know, one day you can be up six figures, seven figures, the next day you're broke. You know, um, it's it's. It's almost the same thing as battle. It's, I don't think there's any other thing I could have transitioned into from SEAL teams to CIA unless I was an entrepreneur. I don't think there's anything else that, because it's almost that same thrill, the same fear, animosity, chaos. These are things that I thrive off of. This is incredible. Think about what you're saying and how that's going to impact the entrepreneur who's listening. Maybe the younger entrepreneur oh. thinking that, this is so hard. They can't do it. What's supposed to be hard? See, you know, like you're empowering the yeah. entrepreneur and you're empowering people to think outside the box that it's not it. It can be a nine to five job, but it doesn't have to. And if you have dreams and a vision, yeah, you can move the needle, and it's going to be yeah, it, but, it, but just as hard. Yeah, there's, a battle, but in a different. There's way. a process, you know. Right before this, I was I was talking to your husband Shane. He was like, you know, I'm I'm working eighty to one hundred hours a week. I was like, holy shit. He goes for like the next four or five years. Holy shit. He didn't complain a second. Not a second. He loves it. He loves it. He got three hours of sleep. I'm like, holy shit. But <laughs> Sick. It's, everything has a process. You don't have to, you don't have to like the process. Like the process of the gym. Sometimes I, I know you're going to laugh. I hate going to gym, but you know what I do? I get up every damn day and I do it because I know my mindset is this. Every day I don't go to the gym, I take time off my life. Every day I go to the gym, I'm adding a second to my life. Every day I don't, I'm taking five minutes off my life. People are like, well, that's not an even equation. I don't care. That's what it takes to get me up every day. And I do it. Now, I, there's days that I love to go to the gym, but I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you and so, say every day that, you know, oh, let's do this. You know, you didn't get to where you were at without a lot of hard damn work. Every and I guarantee there are days where I don't want to get up. But as an entrepreneur, which they say that the definition is a risk taker, every single person on planet earth is a risk taker. Every night you go to bed, there's a chance you may not wake up. The question is, is did you live your day to the fullest? And do you have your, your day planned out for tomorrow, for the next day? Every night I go to bed, I go, Whew, I did it. I did it. I accomplished, you know, and I have, I, I set macro goals. You know, the problem with people and the reason why they don't become successful is they have unrealistic expectations, unrealistic goals, and an unrealistic, uh, unrealistic time frame. I'm going to become a doctor in a year. Is that going to happen? I don't think anyone says that particular but thing, but I'm yes. giving you, I'm, yeah, or I'm going to become rich. You know, I've heard people are like, well, you can win the lottery. That's not a process. That's called luck. Mm. That's called just fate. It happened. And what, what do most people do when they win the lottery? They blow all their money versus the man or woman that's out there grinding, putting in the oh, time yeah. and the effort and the hours. Uh, we were talking about buying a new house. I can afford it, but you're like, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, don't do it. Um, you know, it's about creating that generational wealth, that generational impact and making a difference, you know, and I'm not going to stop, but yeah. Where do you, where do you see yourself going? I'm sure that there's fluidity, right? What is the ultimate dream? I say this and everybody, world domination. People laugh at me. Be a little meaning, more specific. I will. Um, meaning that I am um, the programs that I'm running, um, my goal in the next five years is to be on every major stage with every major person that there is to the point where they're coming on my stage. Because right now my stage is fitness, 
and a little bit of speaking. That's that's my main. And by the way, one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show is because fitness is amazing. You are so fit. You embrace getting older. You're just to hear the mindset shift around that. Oh. But there's a tremendous story and human that is very charismatic and. I am going to embarrass you. Super open-hearted and big-hearted. Are you embarrassed? No. I mean, well, I'm trying to. It's so not I, embarrass I, me. You're, Nash, I better uh, kick it up a notch. No, I just, you know, people ask me, you know, why are you so fit? I, I consider it just, number one, being fit is a privilege. Um, and it should be a right that everybody has. Yeah, but you just avoided the, the statement about the open-heartedness. That's the part. I don't care how hard you are on the outside and how tough you are. Um, I know, it's called avoidance. Yeah, I know, it's good. See, I don't, CIA operators have nothing on me. Uh, Mama, two kids, I got it. What is so interesting is that you're so strong and capable, mm -hmm. yet typically when someone thinks of a warrior mm -hmm. and uh, the background and the life that you have lived, they think of someone who has, I don't know, just a dark heart, dark ways about, is this true? I think that's what people's perception is, but that's not what mine is. It yeah. is, see? My right. heart, well, my heart was dark for too long, right? Kind of like, Trist calls me the Grinch. You know, when the, the Grinch's heart, like, oh, you know, it just grew. Um, I went through like most of my life thinking that my purpose was to hurt people. Now I woke up. And the heart grew and it's to help people. Was there a moment, maybe overseas? Yeah, there was a moment overseas. Um, I, I, you know, I tell you that story about being over top of someone and they're bleeding out. Um, I couldn't save them. There's always that moment. Yeah. And now? So, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do the round. Uh, I couldn't put the rounds down fast enough. We didn't have the support we needed fast enough. Medical attention I had wasn't enough. Just, you know, it wasn't his day. And uh, that's when I stopped working for the agency. Mm. I didn't have what I needed. Um, I don't know if the, all, the, the almighty could have came down and done it. I mean, you know, there was too many, there's too many holes in him. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, in my mind is I can save him. I can, I can get off the X. I can drag him over here. I can do this with two other guys. Um, and I couldn't, I mean, we got him home, but he never really went home. So right. that's when I said enough's enough. I wanted to stop. That's where I hung up my, the cleats, the battle cleats, I call them, which I'd happily put on if I need to go back, um, elder. But then I said, there's gotta be a way that I can make a difference without hurting people and losing people. Oh, fuck. And, uh, you know, that's when I took my turn at the entrepreneur world and working with kids and um, working with just all the things that have affected me in my life, all the things that, you know, hurt me and injured me and tore me apart. Um, you know, and I, my marriage hasn't always been where it is. Um, there was a time when Trisha was going to leave me and I can't believe she didn't. I mean, I've got the best wife, I mean, in, on planet earth. Um, and you guys are great friends, but, uh, so now I've just focused my life, my mission, my, you know, my, my life's work is helping people. You know, I, I want to work with young men who don't have a male role model in their, their life. Wow. Sounds like me. I want to work with couples who are struggling, but they're also entrepreneurs that happened to me. Um, I want to work with corporate training, you know, companies because they're just programmed wrong happened to me. So all I'm doing is, is helping people. I mean, I have, probably the best life I've ever lived right now because I'm doing what I love. I'm getting paid for it. And, you know, the ROI isn't the money. It's, you know, it, it's happiness. Like, you know, um, I love it. Do you feel worthy of it? At times, a lot of times I don't. Um, sometimes I think it's too good to be true. You know, I'm a, I'm hard on myself, you know, um, I blame myself for people that I couldn't bring back. I still blame myself for my childhood, even though I know it's not my fault. I mean, there's no fucking counselor that can tell me how I feel, what to think. Um, there's no bottle that I can crawl into that's going to give me the answers. There's no, there's no pain pill that I can take. You know, you're talking to a guy that was, you know, addicted to some pain pills, which you never even knew of at a 
when I was younger in the agency. Um, and I had to dump them out. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, I'm, I am known for being the push-up guy. Um, I do a thousand yeah. push-ups a day, but no one knows why. Because every time I want to take a drink, every time I want to take a pill, every time I want to look at pornography, every time I want to do all the things that used to cripple me, um, I had a very wise man who was my pastor said, drop down, just do a bunch of push-ups. I said, well, how many? He goes, if you get up and you still want to do it, do more. So I do a thousand push-ups a day. I've already done 800 before I got here this morning. But you know what I don't do? I don't do any of those things anymore. And it helps. Um, but that's what works for me. That may not, may, some people go, I can't do a thousand push ups. But this day. is a tool. You're saying tool, use yes. your physical body. Yes. If you recognize things that don't serve you, yes. if you do habits or have addictions or needs that don't serve you, do something physical. I'm, I'm saying that nothing else worked for me. I, I have a hard time sitting across from someone who hasn't gone through what I've gone through and then tell me what I should do. I have a real problem with that. I have a real problem with society telling me their thoughts on battle and war when they've never been to battle or war and they've never been overseas. I have lots of problems with things where people like to just, you know, reading it through books isn't experiencing it in life. Trish and I went to a marriage counselor once. Guy wasn't married, didn't have kids, was young. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that was the one thing that Trish and I agreed on. So we found a counselor who had been married, um, been divorced or, you know, back with his wife who was older, who had kids. I'm like, I can resonate with that. Mm. What do you think the biggest, so you do couples, mm -hmm. uh, our dear friend, Matt Schneider, <laughs> yeah, who, love him. by the way, he has stepped up for me in a way that nobody else has. He has come in and helped me just incredible. And you guys, he's been on the podcast. So you do a couples, mm -hmm. um, coaching. Yeah. You also do uh, business coaching, corporate coaching. Q course. Yep. Okay. What is the most common thread of what people get wrong? Is there a fundamental, for example, let me ask you this. In the CIA, do they teach you how to read people? Yes. Okay. Special thank you to Inside Tracker for sponsoring this episode of the show. I love what Inside Tracker is doing and what they stand for. They want to make personalized health and the latest science available to everybody. And that is why. I have partnered with them for so long. You too can get the benefits of detailed biomarkers in the form of blood work and many other things by going to insidetracker.com slash Dr. Lion. You can check out their various packages. You will get 20% off their entire store when you use my code, Dr. Lion. They've recently added ApoB which is a very, very valuable biomarker when you are thinking about cardiovascular health. They also have numerous other biomarkers that are critical to how you age and things that you can track. The time is now. Head on over to insidetracker.com slash Dr. Lyon for 20% off their entire store. Is there, I guess there's a few questions here common trait mm -hmm. that those people who are really struggling to succeed, right? Do they have just a common trait? Yes. Okay, fine. Start with that. Tell me. So the, you know, for the couples? Uh, it could be couples. It could be a person. Um, what is the unif Is there a unifying challenge? Because um, you have people that are probably sitting across from you and you got them. You got their number right away. Yeah. Um, a lot of what I see, especially if, is it's a lack of of trust. But when I say that with the couples thing, it's not trusting their partner, it's a lack of trusting themselves. Um, a lot of people have a lot of vices and they don't want to address it, you know, or like, you know, case in point, one of the first things I say is, listen, if you're a freak, okay, got it. Right. And a freak doesn't mean, you know, crazy shit. It just means if you have some weird tendencies, but if you want to, if you want to continue to do them, you have to let your spouse know what they are. So you're not talking about mixing like ketchup with your eggs? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like that the things are touching on the plate. Okay, no, got no. It. I'm, what I'm talking about is a lot of people, it's just like when I go to corporate business, there's always, the problem's always the same. It's always the same. It's just on a different platform. Just like when I talk to people, it's lack of trust, lack of, lack of this, lack of that. It always stems from something from the past, which is pain. 
So all I, first thing I do is try to, Hey, have you gone through shit? And they're like, well, I don't want to talk about it. Well, let me tell you what I've gone through. And then people go, well, I can't believe you're so open with that. I always wasn't. But I will tell you that the more open you are with anything that you've experienced in life, or the more open you are with your spouse, the quicker you are to be able to resolve them or part ways because you, it, there is no resolution. Um, and when I do that and we do this, it's so much, it's so much more involved and, you know, because it's more of a, like, we go another layer deeper. Um, I, you know, I do this with Matt, um, and Matt's amazing at what he does. Um, but two years ago, I couldn't, I would have been a hypocrite if I would have been teaching this, you know, first thing Matt said was like, listen, I need to know, how are you and Trish? I'm like, we're fantastic right now. We're doing this. We, you know, date your wife, you know, all the, all the rules that you know of, right. You know, you know, I've been, me and Trish have been married 18 years. We're going on 20, November 3rd of knowing her, um, mating the day I met her, but I was like, we're better than we've ever been. He's like, okay, tell me when it wasn't bad. Tell me what you guys were going through. And that was a hard talk with Matt, you know, cause Matt was my business coach and my peer and we've worked together for years. He's like, you know, are you doing that shit anymore? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. So he, he thought about it and then was like, I want to bring you on. And I'm like, okay. And, but you know, I have, there's, there's a standard, you know, and I don't, I don't meet it. I exceed this standard. You know, I, I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. Um, so what I want to do is the only way that I can do that is surround myself with people who are like-minded, right? Um, I need that. I have to feed off other people. You're very much a, uh, a team player. I've been told that actually is a kryptonite of mine. Yeah. I, Wait, I, what does that mean? A kryptonite? It's a weakness. I, I, I don't like, I don't need, you know, I have so many people in the industry that have the same title that I had, the seal and, you know, they're entrepreneurs and they make it all about but do them. they have a t-shirt company? Oh, oh you oh, do. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, um, I honestly believe that team trust, effort, attitude, mission, um, that's the key to success. Just like teamwork, problem solving, leadership, and communication. And I keep it simple, stupid. Everybody makes things hard, doc. I just try to simplify shit. You know, and people are like, it can't be that easy. Well, it worked for me. Now it may not work for you, but take what I've learned. Like I, I can't sit here and I can't get up on stage and talk about shit that's not true. I'm not going to do it. It's uh, a very redeeming quality of yours. You are not able to, I would like to say that you don't have a filter, but we're not going to say that. I'm My you're, filter's getting better. You're very, no, I'm totally teasing. Yeah. Um, you have a barometer for truth. Yeah. You feel a certain way. You say it. I think more people need to do that. We're, I agree. As a society, we're we're walking around on eggshells because we're. You know, I told you, I've, I'm going to say this right now. It's only a matter of time before someone sues someone and wins for blinking at someone the wrong way. It started with the McDonald's coffee. Next thing you know, a burglar broke into a house and fell through the roof. He sued him, and these people won. The problem with they didn't America, live in Texas though, did they? No, it wasn't Texas. Um, the, the ecosystem is so fragile right now. Um, fitness is being thrown out the window. And, it, you know, like people that are in shape are almost being stereotyped as being horrible because they put in work where, listen, you want to be heavy set and run a magazine? Great. You know, Victoria's Secret models. We grew up on that. They were like, you know, the epitome of what a woman should look like. Now it's, you know, a woman that's 175, 180 pounds. I'm not saying there's not women or people that are attractive overweight. I'm just saying I'm not attracted to that. I'm attracted to, to the discipline that it takes to look the way you look. Matthew's in shape. I, you know, I take care of myself. That's what I'm attracted to. And that's what I, th I, I don't know where we got off course. It's like, you know, this meteor is coming, coming at us and, you know, it just, we, you know, we were, we were on projectile and we were doing great. And then all of a sudden something bumped it and said, no, we got to go this way. I, I don't, I try not to get into politics. I try not to talk too much about religion. The one thing I do know is that, um, I hate seeing the world, the way the world is right now. Everybody's so enabled. Um, and that's why I'm getting up on these platforms and I'm telling people, you know, I, I said that at an event recently. I'm like, as I look around the room, I see about 30 people that are overweight. I have no problem with that if you're in the gym every day, but if you're not, I'm just letting you know that your body is your resume. People get angry with that. The people that get angry about that are the people that aren't putting in the work. 
I had one lady goes, listen, I go to the gym five days a week and this is how I look. I said, I absolutely love you. You're the sexiest woman in here because she had the balls to stand up and say that in front of a room of, you know, a couple hundred people. I love that. That is the mindset that I want. This is what God gave me. Okay. So what would you tell, where, for number one, I kind of get the sense of where you feel that the world is going. What is the intervention going to be? The intervention, I absolutely love the idea that we can take back our bodies, mm -hmm. that we can be fit and we can be strong and the outcome is the outcome. What do you think is the way to get us there? And you might not have the answer. Maybe you know, it's on I, Coca Melon. You know, I, 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 I think more people just need to lead by example. I, I don't know. You know, that I've been asked that question. You know, usually America comes together when what? Something catastrophic happens. Um, I don't want something. To, I, I'm hoping that's not the case. You know, only way I could see that is if like some new form of disease came out where if you were overweight, you were passing away. I mean, I don't want that to happen. I just want America to wake up, you know? Um, and I know you here too. I don't have time or I don't have money to work out bullshit. Then you better be ready. How that you better be ready for the time sickness takes. You know, but yeah. I tell men, you know, our job, my role in my family. I always say this to men: if someone were to break into your house tonight, all right, tonight, where if if Shane is home, where are you? Are you in front of him, beside him, or behind him? You're probably with the kids behind him as he's going to go take care of something. What I'm worried about in society is there's nobody to protect, right? We men are weaker than they were 10 years ago. I'm not making this up. Um, there are, I know, I know probably more women who are stronger than men now that I've met, you know, in my, my role or whatever this is, this, this tour that I've been on, where there are more women at these events than there are men. And all these women are fit and they're stepping up. And I think that's great, but I'm just asking guys, what happened? Are you, because your husband's in shape and he works a hundred hours a week. Um, you know, I get it done. I'm always on the road. I'm working out. You can find time. Too many people, um, they make excuses, right? You, you can't be a problem maker. You have to be a problem solver. Drop down, do a hundred pushups a day. Do a hundred air squats. Spend, do a Tabata, which is a four minute. Exercise. It doesn't take much to get you in shape. Come to, you know, talk to subject matter experts, find out what's wrong with your body. I had a lot of things that were wrong with me. I was doing it wrong for the longest time. That's why I'm never fucking leaving you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, even though you threaten to leave me. Uh, um, well, if you don't break. get those test results done, then- We uh, will. Yeah. But I don't know what it's going to take. But all I do know is historically, it's going to take something catastrophic. I hope that's not the case. I just want people to, I hope- Enough people are listening to this message and they understand that I'm not being insulting. This is a heartfelt message to look in the mirror and get in shape. And fitness isn't just how you look. This is what you told me. It's how you feel. I feel, I mean, I get up and I'm still sore. I mean, it's impossible to have no aches and pains, but it's the overall mentality that I have where like, you know, I'm blessed. I have my fitness. I'm still running and gunning with the best of them, not overseas, but you know, in the gym, um, and I'm happy. And I owe a lot of that to you because when I first met you, I wasn't in the same mindset that I was now. When I met you, I was still kicking indoors and doing things. Um, and that's a part of my life that I'm proud I did, like just like being a Navy SEAL. But people always ask me, what's the most, you know, most impactful thing that you've done? Minus my wife and kids, I don't know yet because there's so much more, right? I have so many more pages. I, I, I can't stand the guys that were like, you know, I, I get it. You're a Navy SEAL. Get it. But what are, what are you now? What are you doing now? What are you doing tomorrow? Right? I'm not Al Bundy. I'm not going to keep living in the past. I used to do that too much. I won't do that anymore. Well, I think that everybody should give you a follow, mm -hmm. listen to you. Thank you. Where can people find you? Yes, ma'am. Um, so two of my main platforms will be my website, raycashcare.com or IG um, at raycashcare. Um, I tell every single person, if you have a question about, you know, physical, mental, and emotional um, stability, or a, just a question, it's a, it's a well thought out question. I will answer every DM. If it's a dumb question, you're going to get blocked. Yeah. 